بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الاحباب in the seventh point that Imam Barbahari mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala in his treatise and I just want to quickly bring up a very beneficial faida from or in fact the eighth uh, the eighth point bring up a couple of benefits that Sheikh Rabi Ben Hadi al Medhali Hafidullah Ta'ala that he mentioned and first uh, Imam Baba Hari Rahimullah Ta'ala said Fandir Rahimakullah Kullu Min Kullu Min Sametta Kalamahu Min Ahla Zamanika Khasa Fala Tajalana Wala Turkhalana في شيء منه حتى تسأل وتنذر هل تكلم فيه أحد من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو أحد من العلماء فإن أصبحت فإن أصبحت فيه أثرا فإذا أصبحت 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 فيه أثرا عنهم فتمسك به ولا تج ولا تجاوزه لشيء ولا تختار عليه شيء فتسقط في النار Imam Babahari رحمه الله تعالى said He said may Allah have mercy upon you He said anyone that you hear something from them from your time especially from Zemanika Khas especially in your time then don't be in a hurry don't be hasty to enter into what they're talking about until you ask and analyze did anyone from the companions uh, speak about this issue or any one of the ulama and as we mentioned before men sabaka bihada qul who preceded you in this statement and if you find a narration upon them, upon the Salaf or upon the Ulama, then adhere to it. Adhere to it and practice it. And do not go beyond it. And do not choose other than it and end up falling into the fire. The Shaykh mentioned Hafidullah Ta'ala some very important points and we already mentioned the speech of uh, Shaykh Ahmed Najmi Rahmatullah Ali. Uh, Sheikh Rabi mentioned some very important points with regards to this about being cautious of accepting and taking and trying to practice from anything that seems strange within the religion without asking and verifying was it, does it come from Kitabullah, was Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and their fiqh, the fiqh of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een and that one should not be in a hurry to get involved with the latest trends and the latest uh, things that people are involving themselves with or speaking about without verifying is it does it have a um, a foundation in the religion of Islam meaning based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah and one of the things, some of the benefits the Sheikh had mentioned, he mentioned that the major scholars of this Ummah have put forth some foundation, some usul, in which to, for us to understand and practice, and that we, we need to contemplate these usul. And he said, for men usulihim, kullu yukhath min qawlihi wa yarad illa rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the first qaida or principle the shaykh mentioned which is from the qawaid of the salaf of this ummah from ahla ilm is that they're saying 
and it comes from an ether of Imam Malik and could possibly even precede his statement, but I, I am aware of this statement from Imam Malik, in which it was said that whoever that everyone statement can can be taken or rejected except the Prophet وسلم, meaning that we only are madhab and the with regards to the foundation of the religion the only one we can truly blind follow is the one who received the wahi the one who's received the uh, revelation and this is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that even we don't just take with regards to fiqh and things like this we don't just take any one of the sahaba even and they're all trustworthy and they're all uh, praiseworthy and they're all thiqa wa adul and they have adala but we don't blind follow them in issues of ijtihad and so forth without looking at what is the strongest evidence because maybe they differ over a particular mas'ala in fiqh and furu and have different views about something we don't just say well a sahaba did it and that that is sufficient but we take those things which are the salaf were united upon and the only one worthy of blind following that that their statements cannot be tested to look whether it's correct or incorrect is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he received the revelation and he uh, from allah azza wa jalla and so all the rest of uh, of humanity uh, from the uh, the companions and, and other them we look to see on that scale of the sunnah we look to see was it an issue of ijtihad or was it an issue where so and so gr a great imam made a mistake on this so everyone's statement can be rejected or accepted except the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then another foundation, women usulihim men qalahu men men ma qalahu Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah taala. Ida khalaf qouli qoul Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa adribu bi qouli arda haid haid. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah taala. And this forms another one of our uh, these these principles from the usul of Ahl Sunnah and and the Imams of Ahl Sunnah. Is the statement of Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala where he said that if a statement of the Messenger وسلم, contradicts my statement, my goal, then throw my statement against the wall. Meaning, that it, it, it's not even considered. It's not, uh, my statement should, is not even considered when it comes to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. So if you find, a, and as some of the Imams say, if you find a sound, authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, then that's my madhab. Leave what I said before, my other view that I did from ijtihad. I, I strove. It wasn't based on my desires. But the bottom line is, we go with the nasus. We go with kitab wa sunnah to Rasul ﷺ. This is the asal of the, the deen. And the Faham of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'een. So this shows us these are important foundations that you might hear something strange, even from a great Imam, a great Alam, Alam of Sunnah. He may make a mistake and he may say something that even is a Qaida that has no Dalil for it. So we have the right to ask with proper manners and Adib, Ya Shaykh, uh, you know. Where, where does this come from? Did any of the Salaf uh, say this? This Qaida you brought? You know, does it come from Dalil? So we all have a right to question that, to find out so that we, we, we can understand and practice our religion based on clarity. But everything must come from the Nasus, must, must, must branch out, you know, from the Nasus, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you find a a statement, and as these great Imams of Taqwa, uh, the Muttaqeen, that they said, as the statement of Imam Shafi, he said, Khalaf is qawli, qawlu Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fa'adru bi qawli, erda haid. 
that if uh, my statement contradicts the statement of the Messenger of Allah, of Allah Sallallahu Wasallam, then throw my statement against the against a wall. You know, get rid of my statement. And then the statement of Imam Ahmed. This also forms one of the great foundations of Ahl Sunnah, one of the great principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. وقول إمام أحمد رحمه الله تعالى لا تقلدني ولا تقلد مالك ولا عزاعي وخذ من حيث أخذوا There's a beautiful statement of Imam Ahmed which also lays us that our foundation is not I don't just say even we love the Sheikh we're studying the Sheikh's explanation right now Sheikh uh, Rabi حفظ الله تعالى but we don't say Sheikh Rabi said and that's that's the end of any and every issue no we look, the Shaykh has is also uh, confined and restrained by evidence. And his coal, his statement can be scrutinized, as well as the statement as we're studying Imam Baba Hadi's treatment, uh, 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 treaties, and his statement is being analyzed by the ulama who explained it. They explain it and give it the best uh, explanation and look into the statements and any mistakes that Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala made or any things that need to be clarified they the ulama they bring 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 that forth showing us that anyone's statement it can be refuted anyone can have a refutable statement except the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we're talking about the people and so this beautiful athar of Imam Ahmed he said do not blind follow me and do not blind follow Malik, meaning Imam Malik, nor Imam Ozai, but instead take from where they took. And where did they take from? They take they took from Kitabi Law wa Sunnat Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. So again, pointing us to the Dalil. And the Shahid here, what we look what we learn from all of this, that whatever you hear that's strange, whatever you hear. In general, it should come from evidence from Kitab or Sunnah. So this shows us ta'zim of the lil, the importance of evidence for what someone says. And I'll end this with a beautiful uh, uh, story that happened to me. I remember I was going, going to travel back to Yemen and I was living in Medina at the time. And I asked one of the mashayikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Suleiman al-Rahili, Allah Ta'ala. I asked him, I said, Sheikh, I'm going to go to Yemen. And so I said, Sheikh, I'm going to travel to Yemen. What do you advise me? And he gave me several pieces of advice. And one of the very important pieces of advice he said, he said that whatever you, you uh, hear there while you're studying in Yemen, make sure you compare it to what you hear from the major scholars, the Kibar ulama. And then he mentioned four, and it made me so pleased when he mentioned these, I think it was three or four. He mentioned, uh, uh, of course, Ben Baz, Imam Ben Baz, Rahimallah Ta'ala, Imam Al Albani, Rahimallah Ta'ala, Imam, uh, Imam, um, Ben uh, Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala. And then he said, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wa'i, Allah yarhamahu. And I was very pleased when he said that. You know, that whatever you hear, whatever you listen to, compare it to what those big, those those giants in this time, uh, what they, what they uh, said. You know, so meaning that you might sit in Durus with a student of knowledge or a sheikh, he's young in age, whatever the situation may be or less in knowledge, of course, in stature than those great imams. And sometimes you might hear something strange. And sure enough, when I got there, I studied, may Allah bless uh, the mashayikh and the students and and the Muslims everywhere. But I was in a particular markas, a sunnah there. And one of the students of knowledge, we were studying some of the treaties of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab, and I recall hearing some strange statements that I never heard. And I'd studied these very treaties in Aqidah, in Medina, and with Mashaikh here in Saudi. And so I asked him about it, and he made a mistake. The brother made a mistake, and another student made a big deal out of it. 
the brother who was teaching us. He's a student of knowledge, a Yemeni. May Allah preserve him, a sincere brother. But he made, he made a mistake because a lot of his, his knowledge, it came from some of the Mashaikh, younger Mashaikh, and from his reading. But by the permission of Allah, I was able to sit with ulama and study these treaties and listen. Even just from being in those gatherings, you hear certain kawaid and principles being repeated constantly. So then I was able to say, well, who preceded you in that understanding? You said something about the Qur'an. That sounds a little uh, strange. And I mentioned that in a humble way, and he wasn't too sure. And then one of the other students was a little bit stronger and, and harsher with him. And then he brought it to the sheikh, and the sheikh clarified it. And the point being is that anyone can make a mistake, and we're all bound by evidence. Evidence from Kitab Allah, wa sunnatul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the faham and the salaf of this ummah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.